I bought the new Desperado boot from Thursday Boot Company and used them over four weeks to see how they fit and how they held up. Do they have a place next to traditional cowboy boot brands that have been around for decades, or are they just trying to cash in on the latest trend with a half-assed made boot? Find out in this extended test review. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya And then I'll be on my way Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you for coming back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. I got a ton of requests from you guys to do a video on a new Thursday cowboy boot. And I mean a ton. The last time I got this many requests to do a video on a pair of cowboy boots was with the Tacovas press kit. So this is going to be a good one for sure and I hope you enjoy this video. How I'm going to do it is break down the details of this boot in a rundown. Then I'm going to do an extended test and put this boot to work to see how it holds up and breaks in. And then I will end this video off with my final thoughts and you can decide whether or not this Thursday cowboy boot is right for you. So without any further ado, let's start at the first one and break down the details of this boot with the rundown. All right, this is the Desperado boot from the Thursday Boot Company, and it features their rugged and resilient leather, which kind of feels like a drum dyed oil leather that's kind of distressed. This is their tobacco color. This boot also features a square toe with a double stitched welt. It's not as wide as some other boots on the market, and it kind of reminds me of the toe shape that used to be on the Tacova's Jackson, which is now discontinued. And you can also see that the stitching on the welt is matched to the welt color, which is very trendy right now. This boot also comes in at 13 inches tall and features a cording design in the top and the pull strap style kind of looks like the Lucchese Kennedy style. Wouldn't be surprised if they lifted that right from a Lucchese boot. Down here for a heel we have about a one and a half inch leather stack heel and for an outsole we have a studded rubber outsole. Very different from any other cowboy boot that I've seen. Usually the rubber outsoles have no traction on them, have just the thin lines or the V-bars. Uh, but this one has more of a dress rubber outsole. And the rubber outsole does appear to be slightly thinner than many others in the cowboy boot world. So they also have a thin rubber midsole here as well. On the inside we have a cowhide leather lining and it's a hung leather lining to cover up the seam on the inside which so many cowboy boot brands are doing now. So you won't get as much rubbing, or that's the idea, against your ankle. And then for an insole. We have a soft leather insole, it's non-removable, so you have leather on the top and some foam underneath that to give you a little bit of padding. This Desperado by Thursday Boots is made in Mexico and it's coming in at $235 at ThursdayBoots.com. This video is helped made possible by David's Wear Shirts. David's Wear creates really uniquely designed Hawaiian shirts, but also more Western designs like Paisley that adds lots of personality to your wardrobe. They also have designs for holidays like Day of the Dead, Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, and more. The fabric feels great, and I really like the coconut shell buttons that they have on some of their shirts. So check out their website at the link in this video's description, and you can save 10% when you use code JEREMIAH at checkout. Now it's time to try on this boot to see how it looks and feels. All right, I got on the Thursday Desperado right now, and the leather on the inside feels really soft and really supple, but the first thing that I'm noticing with this boot is that it runs a little bit small and my true size is a 12B so I chose the size 11 on thursdayboots.com and they didn't have any widths so I assumed that it was a D width and it definitely is a D width but it's very short so my toe is practically right at the end of the boot. I do have a little bit of space the thing is, I wouldn't want to go larger because then the boot would be wider. And that's one thing that I feel like Thursday didn't think about when they are releasing cowboy boots is that in the cowboy boot world, you need more than one width, especially from such a big company like Thursday Boots. So 
they should hopefully in the future release D and double E's and hopefully B widths um, if they want to compete on a higher level like with Lucchese or Tacovas or Hondo or Fanoli or many of these other brands that have been in the industry forever and have access to some more narrow widths. Now, Tacovas doesn't, but definitely Lucchese, Fanolio, and many other brands that have been in the industry for a while understand that, and they have those options available. It's a good looking boot. You know, I like the toe shape too. Not quite as wide as other wide square toes in the industry. Uh, very much like a French toe kind of, except it doesn't slope as much. Here's the POV, you can see that leather which is nice and supple and that wide square toe which really isn't that wide and it's really hard to notice that there is a double stitch welt at all pretty cool look so they look cool and the insole is nice and cushiony but how do they work out when they're actually used that's right we got to do an extended test Yes, it's time to put these boots to work, and usually I find some local business to volunteer for, but none wanted any free labor, so I'm on a community tour to help out neighbors with odd jobs. The first day, I arrived at a neighbor's to help with heavy items in their basement. I began by moving a cinder block out back, which I just returned to a pile that was already there. Next up was a power inverter, which my neighbor wanted to donate to the local thrift store. Now this was definitely heavy, but nothing a big guy like me couldn't handle. It looks like it was in great shape too, so it'll probably turn a good profit for the thrift store. Then it was back down to the basement to get boxes of tools as well. Then finally, off to the thrift store donation center, where it took two guys to carry in the power inverter. And to be honest, that made me feel pretty good. The next week I continued my community tour and headed to another neighbor's to help with wood stacking on a fairly cold day, but I knew I would warm up fast as soon as I started to move around. This neighbor had lots of wood around their property but hadn't had the muscle to help organize it in stacks, so I was more than happy to help. Soon enough we had all the wood stacked and she was ready to finish out the winter. The next week I headed a little further out, but hey, if we're in the same county, we're neighbors. And this neighbor said she had a gutter clogged up in a certain spot on the roof, and it was a little hard to reach, but I was able to get up there and see what was going on. Sure enough, it was a little clogged with dirt and ice, probably because the pitch of the gutter had sagged a little bit over the years, but it doesn't make much work to clean it out. First I removed the ice, then I was able to get at that buildup of gunk. And after the spot was all clean, I just chucked it in the woods, and that was that. For my final stop on this community volunteer tour, I visited another neighbor whose driveway needed a little bit of attention. There were some low spots where the water would pool when it rained, so I scoped it out a bit and began taking stone from the side of the driveway and pitching it back into the center with the low spots. Then it was time to even it all out with the rake. Even after the raking, there was still a low spot, so I revisited the extra stone at the side of the driveways and moved it with the wheelbarrow. I got some stone stuck in the teeth of the rake too, and thought it was a great reminder to always floss, guys. To finish it all off, I tamped down the driveway a little bit with what my dad calls the Stunt Buick, ever since I tested his foldable boot jack invention by running it over. With the low spots fixed and the driveway looking new, I was done and my neighbor tipped me with this carton of eggs from her chickens, which is definitely a win for me in these Desperado Thursday boots. All right, I'm back after the volunteer community tour and these boots were a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna show you how I cleaned them up in case you get a pair yourself. First, I brushed the dirt off. Then I used some distressed leather conditioner since this is a distressed leather. Then once they dried from that conditioner, I used a stiff plastic bristle brush to sort of rough up the fibers again and give it that distressed look. Then I used some edge dressing along the side of the boot at the welt and the heel 
to give it some more color since it had lost some color in the snow and the weather where I wore these boots. And they pretty much look brand new again. So now it's on to my final thoughts about this Desperado boot from Thursday Boot Company. This is an average made cowboy boot that is very similar to what a Tacovas is built like. Except this has a different kind of rubber outsole that's a studded rubber outsole that's a bit thinner than the rubber outsoles that Tacovas uses. So they've added a extra rubber midsole in here, which is definitely necessary with such a thin rubber outsole. And the leather quality is okay. The outsole is okay. I really didn't have any problems with that. The biggest problem I had with this boot was fit. For those of you new to the cowboy boot space, since boots don't have laces, cowboy boots are supposed to also have width sizes. Width sizes can be found with a Brannock device, and you can see over here on the side where there are width sizes from triple A to triple E. It is very important to have a proper fitting boot with a width size, especially for the arch, because if you don't have the right width size, the arch is gonna land in the wrong spot, but it also helps from having your toes cramped at the end of the boot. And from my experience, the more width sizes a boot brand has, the better boots they usually make. Now, I usually give newer indie startup boot brands a pass because they're just starting out, but Thursday Boot Brand has a lot of resources. They have a lot of investors and they could have totally done cowboy boots the right way by showing width sizes on their website. And they actively chose not to so they could make more money. This size 11 boot has the same width size as many of my other 11D boots up here, but it still feels more like a shoe than a cowboy boot. And I say that for two reasons. One is that it's shorter than many other 11D boots that I have up here, even though it is a comparable width size. So it feels like they're catering to an audience that cares about where the toe lands at the end of the boot, like you would with a shoe with laces or with sneakers, when in reality that doesn't matter at all when it comes to cowboy boots. And I also say that because they actively have reduced the amount of heel slip in this boot by rounding the counter inwards more so than every other boot that I have, which led to me getting blisters. Guys, it's really important to have a right amount of heel slip in a cowboy boot. To go over fit again, is it snug around the widest part of your foot? Is it snug here at the instep? And do you have an adequate amount of heel slip? Usually it's between one and two fingers width. If you already have lace up Thursday boots, you might like how these fit. But if you're a cowboy boot fan who likes a bunch of different brands, you will probably hate these because they fit like garbage, even though they use fine quality materials. If Thursday Boots really cared about making a good cowboy boot, they would have released width sizes, but they didn't bother with that at all, which proves to me that it's not about the boots for them, it's about the money which is kind of a shame because that sort of vision ruins the cowboy boot experience for many people getting into it. So if you're actually interested in getting into cowboy boots, don't let Thursday boots ruin your interest in them with their garbage fitting product here. Instead, try a brand like Hondo Boots or Finolio Boots. They are in a similar price range, a little bit more expensive, but you're getting a better product and you can actually get width sizes from them from like A to double E, maybe even more. That's what I got for you today. Let me know what you think of this video and the Thursday boot desperado down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thursday boots needs to go back home. Leave those cowboy boots alone. If they don't care to do it right, they need to pack up and get out of sight. <laughs> That's what I think anyways. Why don't you check out this video up here about a pair of Hondo boots. Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.